Andrew, on a scale of one to 10, how at home do you feel right now? <laughs> this is fantastic. This is like an 11. <laughs> That's great. Okay, we're gonna find out why you feel at home on a farm in just a second, uh, but we're starting a new series called Cultivate this weekend. We thought, what a better place to do that than right here at Helen's Acres. And uh, we're gonna find out all the ways that we want to cultivate different spiritual disciplines in our life through this series, but we're also gonna discover um, how we can cultivate a better understanding of worship and musical worship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand you're a little passionate about that. A little bit, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you've been giving leadership to the music department at Trinity for the the last two years. Yes, two years much. Yep. Uh, and uh, who else is on that team? Yeah, so it's a team of four. Uh, we have Danielle. You've seen her sing a bunch. Uh, she oversees our social media, our next gen worship teams. Uh, she's our vocal director uh, for all of our weekend shoots. Uh, you may have met Yos. He's uh, one of our recent additions. He's uh, the new kid on the block. He's the new kid on the block, exactly. Yeah, he uh, works on our comms teams. He uh, helps build some systems around the church. He's also our music director. And then uh, we have Kiko. Many of you know Kiko. Uh, she's really the glue that holds everything together. She's <laughs> the mom of the entire exactly, department. Exactly, exactly. And then there's me, uh, cultural, uh, overall leadership of the department. Okay, now before we get into the music part, just uh, for people that might not know you and know your family, just tell us a little bit about who Andrew Stanley is. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm married uh, to Sarah. Uh, she's a regular on our weekend services. Uh, we just had a kid three months ago. His name is Emerson. Uh, we've been in Kelowna for, I guess five years, like almost to the day. Wow. Uh, and yeah, I grew up in rural Southern Ontario, like yes, rural farm life, hence being right at home right here. And we're talking like hay bales, straw bales, uh, milking cows, picking milkweed <laughs> and rocks out of the field for like a nickel a bucket kind of thing. I thought that was awesome as a kid. And realize now it's not so great, but yeah, that kind of farm <laughs> life. Uh, my dad, he owned a gravel pit. Uh, my whole non-school windows were spent operating front end loaders and heavy machinery. Uh, my dad certainly instilled a, a heavy work ethic in me. So yeah. while I was playing with Tonka trucks, you were actually driving <laughs> the big trucks. Eight years old, driving those front end loaders. That was something else. So that's a little bit about your personal life. Let's talk about your spiritual passion toward music. When did that start? If you're growing up on the farm, mm. how did how did those two things connect? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Music has always been a prominent part of my life. My mom I was a piano teacher. Uh, my sisters were big into the piano lessons. When I wasn't working at the gravel pit or on the farm, I was always playing an instrument as a kid. Uh, started off on piano, hated it. I, my mom noticed that I had a bit of rhythm and so she put me into drum lessons. And so I took drum lessons for years. I taught myself guitar. I, you know, I, when I was playing that music, I was always playing along to what we had. And those were Christian cassettes and Christian CDs. And that's like delirious or early jars of clay stuff or, you know, those wow compilations. Yeah. Remember those? So old school. Yeah, I, I know. I right? got a new one every month. I remember <laughs> every it. month. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So as I developed uh, that skill set at a young age, you know, there was just something growing in me uh, and I couldn't ignore it. I uh, label it a calling, mm. name it, whatever you want. Uh, but at the encouragement of those people around me, I always just poured myself into the things that I was passionate about. And for me, that was, that was music. Uh, and when I found an opportunity to align what I was passionate about with an opportunity to point people to Jesus, uh, and in my situation, that was worship leadership, it was pretty much a, a done deal. So for me, I, the test of the calling on my life was, am I passionate about it? Are other people affirming that gift in me? Can I use it to point people to Jesus? And if I can say yes to all of that, then great, let's let's label that a calling. You know, I remember there there being times as a, a kid as I was growing up, I'm almost feeling guilty. I'm like, surely this can't be what God wants me to do for the rest of my life because I love it so much. So speaking of feeling guilty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I am the only son of three kids. Yeah. Uh, the farm is a century farm and uh, it's been in the family for generations. Mm. And so, yeah, that involved a tough conversation. Uh, but my dad, actually both my parents, you know, they never flinched. Uh, they could see what God was doing in me. Uh, and they were my biggest supporters in all of it. And they never let guilt play a role in my decision to follow my calling, even if it meant breaking the typical succession plan of taking over the farm. Well, and I just want to affirm you and what your parents saw mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm, I'm sure you probably would have been a good farmer, uh, but you are a spectacular, passionate worship leader. 
And so I'm just, uh, I'm so thankful that you stepped out and were bold in that. Okay, so you leave the farm, you're pursuing your passion, you get your music degree, and now you're working in ministry. The, everything just goes up and to the right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, following your passions and calling, it it doesn't mean that it's gonna be easy. In fact, I, I believe that you're setting yourself up for opposition when you mm. find yourself in that sweet spot between your passion and those opportunities to, to point people to Jesus. Uh, now I've gotta say, first and foremost, our worship, is a declaration of who God is and what he's done. Um, we sing, we celebrate, we lament, we pray in our songs because he first revealed himself to us. Yeah. You know, our worship, it's a response to his work in us and in the world around us. It's about him, it's not about us. That's first and foremost. And, and it's in this and that I keep discovering these new things. God keeps opening my eyes uh, up to understand the additional reasons for why we sing. So, and, there's something much more going on than a me and me to God interaction happening when I sing. Oh, for sure. You know, for example, I, my home church, my home rural country church, dang, that, that church knew how to sing. You know, I sometimes wondered about the structural integrity of the building because it just felt like the walls were shaking at times. <laughs> and, you know, I, I remember as a kid, I would look across that room. And I would know the stories of the people that we were singing with. And I realized in those moments that musical worship had to be more than just the songs sung before a preacher came out to speak. Worship, it became so much more than just a setup uh, to the message. And yes, our hearts are prepared and our posture is prepared uh, in a unique way when we sing. That is absolutely true. But musical worship, it, it's an invitation for God to meet with us. It's it's an invitation for heaven to invade earth. Oh, preach. And, and therefore, <laughs> it can be a standalone experience. And I just hope that we expect so much more than just a setup in our musical worship. Um, let's not limit what God wants to do because of our limited, limited understanding of what God can do. Hmm. And then there are a couple of specific situations in my life where I learned uh, very practically that musical worship actually makes a difference in your circumstances. Mm. Um, you know, musical worship, it, it puts you in the game uh, with a very strong offense. <laughs> there's, uh, there's something about the musicians being on the front lines of the battles in the Old Testament. I, that, uh, you know, I'm still still working through. I always thought it was because they were easy targets, but that can't be it. <laughs> um, you know, when a uh, number of years ago, when my dad was battling cancer, uh, when he was in the darkest moments along uh, the journey, I would see him singing. And I know that uh, those moments brought him strength. Wow. And, and I know that because often in those same moments, I would take off and I would go for those walks uh, and I would do the same thing. Um, and, and declare those truths. And as we declared those truths about who God is, what he has done, uh, God would often show up and give peace and hope and, and strength in return. Uh, another situation much uh, closer to now, uh, when Sarah and I journeyed through infertility for mm. years uh, before having our son, uh, I can't tell you how many different songs uh, we clung to. Mm. moments of declaring God's promises over our lives, declaring God's power into our weakness. Uh, do you remember last spring, uh, the blessing recording that we did? Yeah. Uh, not the one with the choir, the one uh, from last, it would have been last April. Absolutely. I guess. Um, well, I remember coming to that shoot ready to do battle. Mm. Um, you know, this whole season had been weighing so heavy on us. Uh, and I was going to give everything that I had to declare that God's blessing was going to be passed to the next generation and the next and the next through Sarah and I. And I felt something release mm. uh, in that recording as though something happened, even though I, I couldn't tangibly see it. I don't fully understand it. I'm going to be processing this one for years. But all I know is that we were pregnant with Emerson within the month. Your mini me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, those two experiences uh, in my life, they ended up very differently. Uh, my dad passed, my son was born. Um, but through both, I found Jesus, I found strength in the middle of, of the mess. And 
that's actually a line in the song that you and the team are going to sing in just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's in those moments in the valleys uh, that um, we pour ourselves out and God meets us in lyric and mm -hmm. melody uh, in profound ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm, and I'm on that, that journey of discovery with, with musical worship, but I've committed to not limiting uh, its purpose to what my mind can understand. Mm. Um, and that's where this song comes in. It's, it's a song called Prophesy or Promise. Uh, it reminds me to just keep singing, even when I can only see in part that fear and shame, they have no place in my story, uh, and that his truth is where the lies need to end. Wow, Andrew, thank yeah. you so much uh, for the journey that you've stepped into and that you're still in uh, and allowing God to speak through your gifting. Uh, thanks for the leadership that you give our team. Thanks for the leadership you give our church. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited uh, for what God's gonna do in music through our community in the future. Yeah, me too.